Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Grow Your Referrals, Grow Your Business. My name is Stephanie Sislo, and I'm excited to be hosting this session today. In this webinar, we'll be talking all about the importance of referral partner relationships, how to use your connections with other mortgage professionals to your advantage, some tips on how to provide value to these relationships, ways to keep clients coming back, and tips for 2021. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with BeAMortgageBroker.com, we help connect individuals with professionals who will assist you to become or join an independent mortgage broker. Now I'm pleased to introduce our panel of mortgage experts, Matthew Welsh and Marlene Light, Directors of Wholesale Development at United Wholesale Mortgage. I have a few housekeeping items to cover. The recording will be available on demand after this live session. We'll send you a link via email after the webinar if you want to listen to it again or share it with others. If you have any questions for our experts, please feel free to send it through our Q&A feature or you can email us at info at beamortgagebroker.com. Now I'm going to hand things off to Matt to kick this webinar off. Thank you, Stephanie. So first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for hopping on the webinar with us here and uh, allocating us a little bit of their time. As Stephanie said, my name is Matthew Welsh. I'm one of our directors of wholesale development here on the call as well. I have Marlene Light, my uh, counterpart. And what we're going to do is we're going to run through this webinar. And if we have some time at the end, we'd love to answer some questions. So, uh, you know, hopefully we get some good takeaways out of this and it's a good use of uh, everybody's time. And, uh, with that being said, let's kick this thing off and get to our first slide, which is why are referrals so important for independent mortgage professionals? This is a, an excellent topic here, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it on over to Marlene so she can elaborate a bit on that. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So um, guys, why are referral partners important? So when you apply referral partners to your business practices, their partnerships are essential to continue growth. It's going to allow you to reach quarters of the markets that your business may not have been able to reach otherwise and to break through all of the noise in the market. So remember, there's always two sides to every referral partnership. Um, I would say the best recommended sources for those that are mortgage brokers or loan originators are, they'll include, but they're not limited to uh, realtors, insurance agents, title companies, and financial institutions. Absolutely. Great points, Marlene. Uh, this, is, this is something that we're very passionate about in the mortgage industry, as I'm sure everybody on this webinar is, what, is as well. Uh, you know, referrals are really the lifeblood of, uh, of, of what we do as originators. There are a ton of different ways you can go about getting business as a, as a loan officer or a broker owner, but uh, referrals are really the bread and butter of that. So great points. Definitely uh, keep in contact with your realtor partners, your title agents, and everybody that Marlene just listed. Great point. Now, if we move on to our next slide here, we'll be able to touch on how to use connections with other mortgage partners to your advantage. Marlene, you can take the reins on this one as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks, Matt. So there's a ton of different ways, guys, that you can use this to your advantage. So you're going to save money by getting referrals as opposed to actually going out and purchasing leads. You know, purchasing leads is also a great outlet, but it can be very costly and expensive. Um, you're going to attract like-minded individuals. So once you start to build those relationships, you're going to find out who's suitable for you and your business and vice versa. You're going to attract better candidates. So these referrals, they've, they've usually been vetted out by the person that is sending you the referrals. And there's a reason that they're being sent to you. So you're going to save time. You know, as they say, time is money. You'll also reach more people because referrals can continue to build referrals. So if you do a great job with John, then he's likely going to refer Jane. They'll also be more persuasive. There's already a connection between you and that referral source. So they're gonna find it less stressful to actually reach directly out to you. You've been referred to them by this referral source. Absolutely, if there's one takeaway from this slide that I have here, it's that, connections with other mortgage partners 
create additional referral partners and you're kind of growing your network and building the it's it's the building blocks for a self-sustainable business model so i love that piece uh in addition to that too like like you just said in comparison to like the lead buys it's a little bit more of a concrete uh, referral that you get from these individuals i mean these are realtors Mm -hmm. and title agents and people who know the the potential borrower specific situation so it is a, a more comfortable conversation and also a more concrete lead i believe at least my experience. So Agreed. great points, Marlene. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm going to be saying that a lot because I know that you rock. <laughs> so how can you provide value to your partner relationships? I'm going to let Marlene take it away. And then I have a couple of things I want to touch on after this. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing is going to be more appreciated in any relationship than respect. So, you know, make sure that you're investing time. You need to get to know your referral partners to build that trust. Honesty is so important. Uh, You can never mislead. You always have to be upfront and honest with your clients. These are people that have been sent to you by these referrals. And if you mislead them anyway, you're going to burn that bridge with that referral source. And that's something that you absolutely don't ever want to do. You have to strive to be a better partner. Always seek out ways that you can do something better next time than the last time. And, and most importantly, work through your problems. You, you can't ignore them. You can't ever ignore them. You've always got to deal with any issues that arise head on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and in addition to that, too, there's a few different things that I take away when I look at this slide and I think about it and just talking to people that I've, I've talked to about navigating the process of opening their brokerages and then continuing to do business. It's, you know, again, like I said a couple of slides ago, it's a mutually beneficial partnership. It's a partnership not just a a referral source. So we need to make sure that we're providing value and continuing uh, to provide value to our referral partners so we continue to get that business and grow our network and get referrals from those those referral partners as well. So first and foremost, I mean, let's talk about some of the tangible things that we can do with our referral partners, you know, such as co-branding marketing materials. I mean, you're, you're putting yourself out there, you're having an online presence, you're marketing to potential borrowers on a social media platform, maybe a pamphlet, it's handouts, open houses, things to that nature. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you're pulling in your realtor partner in there as well. You know, they send you leads. Let's let's get them some uh, some exposure as well. I know when I was buying my uh, most recent home here, I came to the open house, and um, there was a uh, the realtor, the listing realtor, had her preferred originator that was that has a brokerage here in town in the open house with her handing out flyers, business cards, and has her contact information in the pamphlets as well. You know, I already had financing, but I mean, I, I saw the value in that and me being in this industry, I really appreciated that. So we need to remember that this is a, a partnership. So there's some give and take in there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, a, another key point too, that I'd want to touch on here is to continue to deliver for your referral partners as well. As Marlene said, you need to be honest, you need to be transparent. So you make sure that you're setting the proper expectations with your referral partners. But another thing that you can do is make sure that you're doing business with the right investors and doing business properly with the right process flow to make sure we're not running into any unnecessary hiccups in the process. This is the mortgage industry. There are, you know, un there, there are things that happen that are beyond our control sometimes. Everybody knows that uh, lending is not always super straightforward, but at the same time, there are things that you can do to mitigate that risk that goes with um, having a, a, a hiccup in the, in the loan process. So we want to make sure that we're hitting contract dates, paying attention to turn times and service and, and communication. So I'm very, very passionate about this part here, as you can tell. <laughs> Let's move on. Ways to keep clients coming back. You want to take this one as well, Marlene? Yeah. So I I feel like I'm probably going to be a little redundant um, based on what was said in the last slide. But you know, I can't I can't drive it home enough. But to say, you know, you have to make sure that you're delivering on commitments. You have to do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. If you have a client that reached out to you and you say, hey, you know, um, give me five minutes. I'm going to call you at 10 o'clock. You know, don't call them at 1015. Don't call them at 1030. Call them at 959. You know, make sure that you're doing what you say you're going to do when you're going to do it. So I would also say create solutions, be a problem solver. So when it comes to anything that may be a bump along the road, 
don't, don't say like, I, I don't know, good luck figuring it out. You know, try and be like a thumb pointer, figure out a way to come up with a solution to be able to help that person. They're going to, they're going to remember that. They're going to remember you going out of your way to try and find a solution for them as opposed to brushing it off and like, not my area. I don't know. Um, you know, be honest. Nobody, nobody wants to be in business. Somebody that's going to BS them and, you know, not be upfront and honest with them. And then I would say also make sure that you accept responsibility and, and make things right. So let's say something does go wrong. Let's say you get a referral and there is a bump in the road. And let's say that you were responsible for that bump in the road. You know, make sure that you accept responsibility. Next time, learn from your mistake and, and move on. You know, let them know that you're going to help fix it and you're going to get things going in the right direction. So I, I also think that it's important to address emotions and not just facts. We, you know, we, we may be in a very tech savvy world, but we also have people that are behind those, um, that technology. And I think it's really important to make sure that, you know, you are addressing emotions as well. For sure. For sure, that's very important. Uh, a few things that I've taken away from this as well in, in listening to you tell me uh, a bit about it and me thinking, getting my wheels turning on this end here is that communication is key. Make sure we're being transparent, make sure we're communicating to people and setting the proper expectations. You know, So uh, in thinking about that, there's other ways that, that it can resonate with people as well. I'm sure the majority of people that are watching this have at one point bought something on Amazon. And especially it, it's, it's relevant right now because of the holidays coming up. And, and if you're like me, you procrastinate with your, with your holiday shopping. Uh, and, and I've taken to Amazon here as of late to, to get some of my needs met. And I'll tell you that I'm watching my, I'm tracking my packages and I'm tracking my packages and making sure that, you know, we're, 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 in, we're, we're where we need to be so I can get my items prior to the time that I need them. And in, in the past, I'll tell you a quick story, not to chew up too much time here, but I, I ordered something for my son. He wanted something that he saw online. And I was like, okay, great. You know, I don't say yes all the time. I do sometimes. And I bought it. And, you know, kids want things now, 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 now. Well, okay, well, daddy, when am I going to have it by? Well, it says that we'll have it by the 14th. So I told him that because that's what Amazon said to me, right? So I'm tracking the package, tracking the package, and it didn't end up here getting getting back here until the 17th, which isn't a huge deal. But the thing is, is I told my son on I told my son a certain time and now we're a few days past that he's on me about it and I'm irritated about it. Now I'm calling Amazon and I'm getting on them about it. But uh, if they would have told me the 17th, things would have been fine. I would have no problem with that. So that, that's what I mean by setting the proper expectations. And then also on the other side of the coin uh, in, in uh, not necessarily pertaining to referral partners, but to clients, keeping compliant, uh, keeping clients coming back, making sure you're providing that that service and, and just making sure you're offering a, a, a wow mentality and a wow experience throughout the tran transaction and, and, and making sure that you're staying on top of that as well. So having a CRM, making sure you're, you're marketing to them and you're staying top of mind with them. Um, and, and at the end of the transaction, when you've, when you've done a great job and you got them to the finish line and they're holding keys in their hands or they've lowered their payment by X amount of dollars a month and they're happy and they're riding cloud nine, that's an excellent time to also ask for referrals to and continue to build on and growing your network. So sorry, it was a little bit long-winded there, but another, <laughs> another piece that I like quite a bit. So we can move on now. Tips for 2021. Pretty, uh, pretty broad slide here, Marlene. Why don't you give us your take on it? Yeah. So you hit on this a little bit, but you know, I want to elaborate. You know, ask for referrals at the right time. So I think that timing is critical. It's going to be important to find the right moments when they're likely to refer. You know, after a purchase goes smoothly after a positive client social engagement or after a high NPS rating or survey, you've got to, you know, strike while the iron is hot for sure. I would say to remind people who have referred clients in the past to refer again, you know, if you go through a lull with your referrals and all of a sudden, you know, they're sending you business and then next thing you know, you, you're not getting any business from them again, you know, reach out to them, see, see why, you know, see what you can do to get back in their rotation of sending you business. And then I would say, lastly, engage with your referrals on social media. Um, we're about to embark on 2021. 
uh, social media is inevitable. It's going to be something that everybody is using. And if you're not using it to uh, touch base with your referrals, then you're probably missing out. Um, talk with your clients on there. You can answer questions from them. You can help them troubleshoot any different scenarios that might come up and, oh, look, you're there. You can actually help walk them through that. They're going to remember something like that and make yourself an active participant in online conversations that are around your brand. You want to be known for something, make it your brand and, and make sure that you're advertising mm -hmm. that to people via social media. Yeah. Yeah. You see that right there on the screen. It says 2021. I mean, it's 2021. We have to have an online presence. Uh, you have to be marketing. You have to have a business uh, face, a Facebook account. You have to have Twitter, Instagram, and make sure that you have an online presence to where you're able to reach just a ton of people. I mean, think about how many people are in the world, billions of people in the world, and everybody's, for the most part, are connected via the internet. So get on there, make sure you're marketing. But another thing that I think about quite a bit when we think about 2019, 2020, 2021, is that you know, although I don't have a crystal ball and I, nobody has a crystal ball, so you can't really, you know, predict where things are going to go. But for the most part, everything's pointing in, in the direction of having a uh, low rate environment for the next couple of years. And mm -hmm. I got to say, you know, if people are getting more loans than they've ever gotten before, people are doing more business and making more money than they've ever gotten before. And um, what I've seen a couple of times is realtors, title agents, and your referral partners get pushed to the wayside because it's a bunch of low-hanging fruit. I mean, I can go knock on doors and everybody in my subdivision, and I'll probably get three loans out of it if I was an originator because <laughs> rates are so low. I mean, you don't have to rely on referral partners and put a whole lot of effort into getting business in this day and age, but you need to make sure that you're maintaining those relationships with those referral partners. Check in with your realtors. Check in with your title agents. Check in with your financial professionals, financial institutions, insurance agents. I mean, anybody that you can you can get referrals from to satisfy the needs of their of their clients because you know although I mean we've seen this in the last five years or so with Brexit rates going up down up down and now we're in an environment where rates are historically lower than they've ever been before so the getting's really good for all of us but at the same time no matter what happens people are always going to need a place to live so that purchase business is going to be uh, be available no matter what. So make sure you're paying attention to your realtors and they're, you're not forgetting about them just because the, the market's really hot right now. And um, also while we're on the subject of tips for 2021 and growing your business and growing your market share, I mean, my best practice here is, is with all the people that I talk to and I help with the infrastructure of their business and help them scale and grow is that you need to supplement what you're doing. I have the people who, like you said earlier, focus on the lead buys. That's great. That's a great avenue to explore. And then we've got the people who use the referral partners. That's a great source of uh, driving business as well. There are people that push a lot of marketing. There's people that pay for internet ads and, um, you know, radio scripts, things like that. But at the same time, you need to find you need to find a perfect balance of incorporating all of that into one, or as a, a mentor of mine likes to say, is pulling different levers and doing different things and seeing what the effort and, and money that you're putting into that source is providing back to you. You know, your return on investment, the value proposition for that service. So maybe you allocate, you know, X amount of time and money over here to lead buys and then over here to, um, you know, marketing materials and of course maintaining your referral partners and, and your social media presence and things of that nature and find out what you're seeing the most return on your investment with and then start to focus your attention in that area while still doing the other ancillary things to drive business because at the end of the day you know the, the more that we can be doing to be closing more loans is really how everybody wins in 2021 and beyond so there's my two cents on that as well yeah i i did want to add something else too so I think it's really important. I know that it, it sounds weird to just kind of out of the blue, reach out to a realtor or a title company or an insurance agent or a financial guy. And guys, I'm gonna tell you, it's not weird. It, you can't be afraid to just make that call. I mean, the reality is we're all salespeople. We, we all know how to talk on the phone and how to engage people. And um, that's just another um, thing that we have to offer is just making that call and just putting yourself out there. You know, Matt and I do it all the time. There's compliance companies that we work with. There's different avenues that we have to reach out to so that we can help with our broker partners um, and be able to get them the best 
things available. And we do that out of, you know, no fear to be able to just pick up the phone and, you know, do an introductory of yourself, say what it is that you do, and then just tell them that you're looking to um, partner up with people in their area of work and that you want to, you know, start building relationships. You may get, you know, six no's for every one yes that you get, and that's okay. That's something that, you know, we get used to in our industry. And then we, you know, just pick up the phone and call that next person and try to build up that relationship. So I just wanted to add lastly, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, pick up the phone and make those dials to build those relationships. Because once you have them in a, you know, you, you, they do refer you somebody and you get that chance to prove to them that, you know, you are going to be that best referral source, you know, they will keep coming back. So don't be afraid to make those connections. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's another thing that I get really fired up about because some of my best business relationships that I've established, I, I, I've had the hardest time working with them and, and not to make this too much about a sales gig, but I mean, everybody who's on this call is in the mortgage industry or they're, compliment, or they're contemplating coming into the mortgage, mortgage industry and we're all cut from the same cloth, if you know what I'm saying there. So in regards to reaching out to people to try and establish those relationships or get that borrower, you've got nothing to lose, but the, but the relationships. You've got nothing to lose but the sale. Get on the phone, beat down the doors of the real estate, uh, real estate agent offices and, and get out there and walk the beat, you know, because that's, that's, uh, again, another ancillary piece of you growing your business and growing your market share for, for the years to come. So I like that piece, Marlene. Thank you very much. Yeah. I wasn't prepared yeah. to speak on it, but I, I dig it. <laughs> All right. All right, if you have any questions for our experts, please type them into the Q&A feature. Um, and Matt and Marlene, if you wanna give some ending remarks about overall the referrals, that'd be great. Yeah, so again, I just wanna reiterate the importance of it. I, you know, it, it's gonna seem like an odd thing to try and um, start up your referral source, but once you dig in and once you start to build those relationships, it's going to absolutely be worth it. You want to be that guy or girl that they are sending their loans to. You want to prove to them that you are going to be able to not only handle it flawlessly, but do it quickly and be responsive and make sure that, you know, in the future, should it ever arise like, oh, I need somebody to send it to, they choose you, um, you know, prove yourself, get yourself in a great place so that they can absolutely think of you when it comes to who are they going to do business with. Certainly. And just to piggyback off that, uh, in, re in regards to being redundant, I know we talked about this a couple slides ago as well. I think this is a perfect subject to be redundant on because you've got to hammer these points home because they're extremely important. And um, yeah, just make sure that you're that you're going out there and you're you're making an effort to get referral partners, and we're also delivering on them, and we're demonstrating our value as originators, business owners, to make sure that you maintain that relationship and you continue to work with those with those real real estate agents and title agents, and uh, you know anybody else who may be able to refer a friend over to you. And uh, you know the the, I mean referral one on one. You ask for a referral at closing. You know, you ask cousins, is there anybody in your family that may be looking to drop their rate or maybe purchasing uh, their first home or an investment property or a second home, whatever the case may be, just always ask for referrals, make it muscle memory. So you continue to do that. Um, with that being said, I believe we covered a lot of information here and we'd love to answer any questions that you guys and gals have. So we do have a question. I need to know more about how to work through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Are there learning resources that you can refer me to? So when we're talking about, when we're talking about advertising on different social media platforms, first and foremost, if you already have a business page established, you may be just looking to create more robust content. But the, the biggest piece that I can say here is A, make sure that you have accounts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and B, be consistent. Make sure that you're consistent, consistently monitor uh, 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 marketing on those platforms. Okay, so I'm looking here too. You do not have a business page established. So first and foremost, you got to get that set up. You need to create a, a business page on those platforms, and then you need to, okay, and you need to create that business page and we need to generate some marketing material. 
be it pictures of a, of a beautiful home and then in, you know, your company's colors font, it, you know, purchase this home with 3% down, you know, be it a first time home, home buyer pro, uh, pro, uh, product. I mean, I'm not a marketing guru. That's, that's Stephanie's gig. But anyway, um, just make sure you're being consistent. And you're consistently posting content to those pages and you're getting your point across. Somebody may scroll through your, your post or your page a hundred times before they interact with you, but that 100th time you get it, you may get a loan out of it. And then you'll also have a referral from it as well. You have an opportunity to gain a referral and grow your network. So make sure you're present by having those, those, uh, those accounts set up and make sure you're consistent with your message and you're continuously posting things on there. Have a regimen, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And just to piggyback off of that. So um, 100% on board with creating a separate account. So make sure that you have a business page established um, on, because you don't ever want to get in a situation of um, you, you want to separate your business life from your personal life. You don't want to, you know, one day be posting, you know, um, if Santa said this, what would he say about me? Ha ha ha. And then the next page or the next post you make say, hey, you know, reach out to me for to do your loan. Um, you know, you definitely want to keep them separate so that you have those two different identities, um, one of which is going to be very professional and the other one can be personal that you still have your friends and family on and, and you know, et cetera, but absolutely create a different business page, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you can easily um, go online to be able to get images and things that Matt was referring to so that you can, you know, market yourself. Absolutely. Um, it is a great, great tool to be able to do it. As far as learning resources go, it's kind of like a learn as you go type thing. Once you go in there and create your business accounts, you'll be able to kind of mimic other people's business accounts and, and go through what they are um, posting on there to share uh, for their business purposes. Mm -hmm. And lastly, on that, before we move move along here, I'll say that if you'd like to uh, to to set up some time, we can absolutely talk with you one on one a bit about that. Yep. And I was going to also add as well, we do have a recorded social media session that's located on our beamortgagebroker.com website. It is a recorded webinar talking all about social media and how to utilize it for your business. So I do recommend checking out that on our website. Yeah, get it from our pros here. I told you Stephanie was a <laughs> All righty. Well, it looks like that is all the questions that we have. I just wanted to thank our panelists for sharing their advice on referrals. I'm sure so many of our listeners will be able to take these lessons into their own mortgage career. I know I definitely learned something today. As a reminder, if you would like more information on becoming a mortgage broker or joining one as a mortgage loan officer, please visit beamortgagebroker.com for more resources to help you make the switch. Again, thank you to everyone in our panel who joined us today. Also, you will receive an email with a webinar on demand soon, but if you have any questions in the meantime, please email us at info at beamortgagebroker.com. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me.